all right what's up people welcome back to the channel and today we're in the garage because we're all dealing with some really bad weather so in this video i'm going to show you guys what i think should be in every beginner bass fishing bag kit or bo or tackle box whatever you want to call it i call it a bag because literally carry a bag with me that's just how this is how I like it. I, I want a bag. I don't want a tackle box that I have to carry around. You know, like those old school tackle box where you open it and it flips up. You know, just not just not my style. I prefer a bag. This is a Cast King bag that I got off of Amazon for my son. This is the tackle box that I built for him because he is he's a super beginner. He He's caught four bass. Uh, his biggest bass is a three three something i think it was a three three pounds five ounces but i'm i can't remember he'll know he'll remember i'll have to ask him but yes this bag right here i highly recommend because it fits everything that i'm about to show you guys in this one little bag it goes a little, a little shoulder you know over your shoulder you can hold a fishing rod right here you know, it'll make you feel super tall because you'll be hitting trees and you can hold the water bottle right there. So it literally holds everything. All right. So the first thing we're going to start out with, with bottom bouncing baits, something that, you know, every beginner, the first thing that they learn to fish with, you know, right here would be some type of stick worm. These are the yum dingers right here. You know, these are the June bug colors. I love the June bug color. Definitely have been used. Uh, I use these a lot for wacky rigs. But, you know, super versatile bait. You can rig them so many different ways. And and they're amazing. They catch fish. Like they, uh, I feel like this bait catches more fish than any other bait out there. It's just a plain old stick worm rigged different ways. But that's the first bait for our bottom bouncing baits. And see, there's a little pocket right here. Just stick that in there. It sits perfectly. The next bait, which is a very popular bait. So many people throw it, you know, for bottom bouncing or even mid, you know, a mid column bait is a fluke. Some type of fluke. Uh, these are some decent flukes. Like the fish eat them. Some of them are a little bit wonky so when you buy flukes make sure that you have all their tails straight or you're probably gonna have to go boil your your soft plastic just to make the tail you know straight and yeah i do mean put it in a pot you know a boiling water pot and straighten out the tails uh i learned that as a little trick but i'll probably switch these out for him just so that he doesn't have to do that but yes a fluke super versatile you can fish it so many different ways and you can pop this in the same same little pouch area it's really cool <clears throat> the next bait that i would recommend bait for a beginner would be some type of crawl or creature bait these are the crack and crawl by guggen squad i like the action of these the scent is kind of funny to me but uh i actually use these a lot on my jigs uh, I like throwing them by themselves. They're awesome as trailers, but yeah, crawls. Okay. And you can stick that in the same pocket. It's awesome. Zip that up. They're secure. Now, with all those soft plastics, you need something to tie them on to. You need something to put them on. So I would recommend, whoops, these, not these specifically, but any type of EWG hook. Just like that. Four aughts, I would recommend a four aught or a three aught just because I, I've had a better hookup ratio on a four aught or a three aught, three aught hook. Put those in the front pocket, sit all nicely. And I also think that you need some weights and slip weights. Get them some slip weights, put them in the bag. The slip weights are really, really awesome, especially if you just want to get that bait to go down. These are one eighth ounces, a one eighth ounce. Toss those in here in the front pocket as well. And we have it, boom, they're in there. All right, now let's get to 
our tackle box that we literally just put in our bag and we can carry around. I forgot this, the size of this one. It looks like it's about 12 by a 12 by six, 12 by five. I'm not sure. So we're going to go on and move to mid column baits. All right. And we're going to start out with, well, a bait that you guys have seen me fish late, you know, recently. And that is a, some sort of lipless crankbait. You know, right here is an Ozark lipless crankbait, you know, chrome and chrome and black. That one works really nice. Like it definitely caught a few fish on this guy. I also have a bluegill colored lipless crankbait for him, you know, just in case he needs to switch up the colors a bit. Like these baits, they go through the they go through grass super well. You just pop them out of the grass. Like if you get a little bit of grass on it, just give it a pop and it just comes right out and it just starts vibrating again. Like vibrating again. You know, they have a super crazy sound. I, I love the sound because you can literally hear this bait coming through the water when it's like, you know, 20 feet away from you. That's all you hear is just that, just that rattle. Like it's so awesome. This is the Guggen Squad clutch sriracha crawl you know he he's he's a big fan of guggen so that's why you know i i get him the guggen baits the next bait i would recommend for a beginner some sort of square bill crankbait this is a strike king it's got it's silent it's super silent like there there's no sound to it like yes when it's in the water those those hooks will make a little bit of a rattle sound but it's silent this is a you know, has a really kind of wide wobble. I, I, I like, I've caught, I've caught a few on this guy. You know, and then of course, get another color. Definitely get another color because you don't want to be stuck with just one color. This next square bill is a Weston square bill. It's the same, it's the same type of square bill that I had in my unboxing video. So, you know, no surprise. This one's got a knocker. It knocks really you know, nice little knock, but that chartreuse green for super muddy water. I would recommend getting two of two of all these baits just in case, you know, you get snagged, you will have another bait. And for our last mid column bait, I would recommend for a beginner is some kind of spinner bait. I forgot which spinner bait this was. I, just, I picked it up. Just I've caught a few fish on it too. I put a little, you know, twin, you know, twin little spl split tail grub on here. Uh, I don't keep them in his bag because he he doesn't use a spinner bait that often. The other spinner bait I have right here for him is one with a little bit bigger blades. This is also a Guggen Squad bait. You know, and this is the bluegill color, and this thing thumps in the water. It's really nice. So, you know that, and then I have another. Another one for him right here. One that he doesn't even need to put a trailer on right there. Like this in the water with no trailer gets gets eight. It's super nice. It looks super small. It has a little bit of chartreuse in there, but it's like a gray and silver. It's nice. And then I've added a few paddle tails, you know, these biospawn paddle tails for him to go on the Guggen Squad. The Guggen Squad spinner. That's our baits for mid column or mid column baits right there i'd recommend those now now let's move to top water so for a beginner and i feel like for anybody really if you're trying to learn how to top water you don't have you've never had a top water bite before and you don't have a bunch of grass around i would recommend for a beginner a whopper plopper all right this is an ozark trailer whopper plopper this is that blue with clear bottom and, you know, it has a little, little plopper in the back. And the sound of these, for some reason, I don't understand, gets bit. Like that sound, you know. And then I have, I have two of them right here for him. You know, this black and chrome right there for cloudy days that, you know, just it shines in the water on a cloudy day. Like the fish just can't resist that. Our next bait, which is really similar to the Whopper Plopper because my son is more of a, just a straight retrieve kind of fisherman. He doesn't really, you know, impede a lot of action to his baits. 
Uh, I don't know why. It's just him being stubborn. But I would reckon, you know, he really wanted a frog. So I got him this frog right here with a little plopping tail, little plopping feet. It sounds just like a whopper plopper. And it's all white. I drew, I put a little red on his belly for a little target for them. It seems to work. Like they, they, they eat this thing. Like it's got that stinger hook just in case they miss. You know, you can still possibly get that bite. I would recommend this frog right here. Or even, you know, because we have to have two, you know, just in case. This frog right here with this little, little paddle and tail right here is really awesome. Like it, it, it gets bit. Like they both sound like a whopper plopper coming through the water, and you can, you can do a straight retrieve, or you can just do little, you know, little twitches, little, or a little swing, you know, like a prop bait, and it'll pop, 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 stop, pop, 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 stop. Like they, they sound really good, and fish eat them surprisingly. Last but not least, our last topwater bait that I would recommend for a beginner is a popper right here. This popper is a six cents popper. Uh, I forgot the actual name of it, but I chose this color because this is how the bluegills look in our water. Like this is just one day I was out fishing and an owl kept trying to like an owl kept trying to attack my popper and I was just sitting there popping it. But the owl thought it was a fish as well. So, hey, six cents, you must be doing something good if, owl, if an owl thinks that this is a fish as well. And I got another popper here as well. And it's this one right here. I believe it's a Rapula or a Rebel, one of those. One of those guys, it started with an R. This one is like a, a, a bass color. I changed out this front hook right here if you can see like it's red i changed it out to a red hook because i feel that that red hook gives it a little bit of a target like it looks makes it have like a little red belly sitting in the water like it's something for the fish to look at like i've gotten bit with this red hook and you know it seems to work and just like all these other baits that we put in here and the hooks it fits right in here perfectly with a little bit of extra room in there like that's sweet and you just zip this thing back up and you're good to go. Like, it's so nice. Also, every beginner fisherman, no matter who you are, you're going to need some line cutters. Right here, yeah, the Boomerang Tool Company. I thought this was Ozark. That's so funny. The Boomerang Tool Company right here makes these. You can get them at Walmart. They're really cheap. And this thing cuts through every line that I've come across, like, if I see a line stuck in the tree, it doesn't matter if it's braid, fluoro, or mono, it cuts right through it. And I just pick up that bait. I snag that bait. It's really awesome. I love it. And put this right there. Now, our next tool that you will need is some needle nose pliers right here. These are some Ozark trailer pliers and they lock, you know, right here, you know, right there. I don't know if you guys can see it, but they lock right there just so that once you get that hook, you can lock that in place and just turn it how you need to to get that either gut hooked fish or to get that hook just that's wedged in there super far just get it out like you just set that right there too and boom that's everything right there it just fits so nicely right there now every fisherman needs this you know extra line right there please take extra line i've made so many mistakes where i fooled my entire you know reel like the whole all the line was out or or i've cut it so many times that when i go to cast it only goes out 10 feet and i was and i've always been like man i wish i would have brought extra line so put in your bag a little bit of extra line just in case because you never know when you might need some extra line goes inside that pocket right there now for you know most beginner fishermen don't want to touch the fish so i would recommend some type of grip right here these grips my son uses these all the time i don't know why he doesn't want to touch the fish it's super weird he's always like it's slimy and yeah of course it's slimy you know but yes i would recommend some type of grip to bring along with you just in case 
or to give them just in case. And last but not least, every fisherman, no matter who you are, I believe needs a pair of glasses, polarized sunglasses. These I got at Walmart, they are renegade. They are kind of cool, I like them, but they're cheap. They're super cheap and my son loves them. He, he says he can see fish in the water from super far away with them, even though they're a cheap pair. If you can, you know, uh, definitely go get a more pricier pair. Like if you're in the looks of for sunglasses, because you know they're they're more expensive because they allow you to see a little bit farther than these fifteen dollar, you know, pair of sunglasses. You can see into the water water deeper. That's the bag, everybody, right here. That's the bag. Literally, take it bank fishing, throw it in the boat. You know, throw it in the kayak and you are set. You are ready to go catch fish. That's it. That's the video, you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you could, watch another video. And I will see you guys next time.